Hello, welcome to this edition of Culture Matters. I'm Desiree Rucker, and I'm here with Barbara Ress, who our new president, Donald Trump, has said that she was one of the first women to actually do construction on a major building in Manhattan. In fact, she rose to the level of executive director of the Trump Organization. Not a small feat in today's male-dominated construction industry. Barbara, how does a, a, a nice girl, Catholic school girl become the head of such a, a, a massive organization of, uh, such as Trump Organization? Yes, um, I uh, took engineering in, uh, grad in um, undergraduate school and um, found my way into construction because there weren't very many engineering jobs when I graduated. It was kind of a, a funny time, 1972, there were a dearth of engineering jobs. So my sister had worked in construction and she got me a summer job working for an electrical contractor. Mm -hmm. So I went back there after I graduated. I worked there for a few years, and I went to another contractor and worked for a few years, and then um, ended up with a general contractor, and they put me on the Grand Hyatt Hotel, and I met Donald Trump, and he asked me, he enticed me to go work for him as a vice president over at uh, the Trump Organization and to be in charge of the construction of Trump Tower. That's very exciting. And I must say, I was reading your book, Alone on the 68th Floor, and you recount some of your interesting um, experiences as a woman in the industry. However, um, I wanted to know more about what it was really like to be on, um, the, the, on the, um, on the um, sites and actually have to lead men in, you know, in this industry because, if, you know, we're talking about a man who, for all intents and purposes, has women in positions that are decorative. So there's no, there's no, there's no uh, being a decorative person on the set. You're not wearing a bathing suit with a sash. You actually right, have a yeah. hard hat and all of that. It was it was horrific for me, and I'm not going to deny it. I mean, there were no laws like uh, sexual harassment laws or anything like that. I mean, it was way before any of that, and it was it was awful. And I internalized it, and I talk about this in my book. It changed me, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be. And I'm sad about that. And it should never happen to a woman. A woman should never be changed by her environment. The number of women employed in the U.S. construction industry has grown. Okay, since you started in what year? I started in 1971, let's say. But according to some of the statistics I'm reading, the number is dwindling. Um, has that been your experience over, over the past few years? This is what I found in my research. Um, as far as engineering is concerned, we'll start with engineering. Okay. Um, when I graduated, there were fewer than 1% women in engineering. I was too low to count, actually. Um, by 1999-2000, there were 20%. But I understand in 2001, 2002, that number went back down a little bit to 19 or so percent, and it's hovered 19, 20 percent since then. The latest research I've found has it at 19, 20 percent. As far as uh, project managers are concerned, um, there were none when I started out um, that, that I was aware of, uh, and that's why Trump says I was the first woman to be in charge of a major project because I, I don't think there were any. There weren't even any on, you know, in, in the field on, uh, for working for contractors. Uh, now there's about 6%. Uh, I don't know what percentage of them are engineers. As far as engineers in construction, mm -hmm. that number is about 10%. And as far as women in the trades, I'm sorry to say that number is about 3%, which is what it was in 1976 when uh, President uh, Carter mm -hmm. signed an executive order uh, decreeing, so to speak, that there should be 6.7% women in construction trades on federal jobs. Yes. And by the way, nobody ever enforced that. And it's still only 3%. Well, I, I do know that now um, New York City is undergoing a construction boom. It, yes. is, it is ridiculous. You can't walk a block without being under scaffolding. And there is a push on to have more women represented as part of, you know, this, this boom, um, as engineers, as uh, construction uh, workers, uh, and hopefully as construction managers. Um, what do you think as far as how to get women to go, to understand that this is happening and to position themselves? Because a lot of women are going into schools um, going into the universities and colleges now, and they're not necessarily being 
you know, track for it. Yeah, yeah, towards STEM. Yeah. And so what would you say to young women who are kind of on the fence, don't think they're smart enough, or have an interest, but don't think, because that's the thing, I think a lot of, like, I think in your book you even mentioned that men assume that they're smart enough, women. Right, well, I think that uh, society sort of does that. Um, we, we, we build up on men and we don't build up on women. Um, young girls um, usually or historically have been taught that they are not good at math and that they should be afraid of math and so you know it sort of follows it's like a uh, self-fulfilling uh, prophecy uh, women that are good at math should study engineering there's yes. no question about that and there's mm -hmm. no reason why we shouldn't have 50 percent of our engineers be female or 51 percent because that much of our population is female I read something lately that was in Breitbart News that said there should be a cap on the number of women engineers going into school. I was flabbergasted. I never saw anything like that in my life. I never heard anyone come out and say that. And their reasoning was that women drop out. Well, m women drop out, men drop out too. And they drop out for reasons. Number one, it is very hard. There's no question about it. But that's not why women As are dropping out. As it should be. Out. It's because yes, it's, yes it ex it's exacting. So yes. you have to be precise yes. and scientifically. You know, Absolutely. Yes. But women drop out because they're discouraged, because they're not promoted, because they're uh, told that it's not something that they really can do naturally. I mean, Lawrence Summers, a few years ago, the head of Harvard, uh, was talking about women in the sciences, mm -hmm. and he said that they didn't have the aptitude. I mean, again, I couldn't believe it. I don't know. I think he did resign, but yes. I don't know why people still interview him after saying something like that. I think he was run out of town on the rail. He was run out of town for a while, but he sort of come back. Yeah. But um, basically, uh, w women are discriminated against, and that's the truth. Women are led to believe that um, this is not something they can do, and when they do it, yes. They're led to believe that it is unwomanly. So they, so they start having doubts about themselves. And I, I know it's not like it was when I was in construction. I mean, it's, it's vastly different now. But when you start, when people start saying, well, you know, you're, this is not a womanly field or you're doing a job, and especially for women in construction mm -hmm. who are, say, uh, hard hats, yes. uh, they're doing a job that, that society doesn't think is a woman's job. After a while, you start internalizing that and you feel like less of a woman. And it's, it's a terrible thing. It's a wrong thing. And, and part of the problem is there isn't enough uh, solidarity among women. There aren't yes. enough women there to, to look for help. Yes. And women should be building each other up. And sometimes we don't do that. We yes. don't build each other up because society has sort of said men are more important. Be like a man. I mean, there was this book, Lean In, which I, I objected Sandra, to because, yes, yeah. um, it was, um, um, her name Facebook. escapes me for the second. But yeah. she was Sandberg? a. San Shovel Sandberg? Or Yes, yes, um, Sandberg, and she was sort of saying, "Be more like men." And I, you know, this notion that men are like a certain thing and women are like a certain thing drives me crazy. Women are as aggressive. Women are as smart. Women are as perceptive as men, and yes. we shouldn't allow any kind of stereotype to enter the conversation. Yes, I remember I was I was watching um, uh, the Super Bowl last night, and it was a great commercial on. It was a a man with his daughter, and they were watching the the Super Bowl and she, watching a football game, and she said, you know, they're relying on the Blitz too much. And <laughs> he was like, oh, um, he said to his, uh, it was uh, like one of those computer Siri type things, and he said, play my girl. And so I, it was really touching because I think if, if, if fathers and brothers could assert the, you know, to, you know, their sisters and their daughters that your brain is just as magnificent as any man's and your ideas are just as important, we can really move the needle on society's problems in a lot of areas. Yes, I agree with that. I think a lot of it has to come from men and uh, there are, uh, and unfortunately I see it in younger men. When I went to law school, I was so surprised to see the sexism was still alive with the younger men. Um, but now I'm hoping the generation of millennials, led by young women who seem to have a, a more of a, a sense of self, will start reversing that trend. I saw it in the Women's March where that was yes. so gratifying to yes. see the solidarity there, especially after losing the election. Yes. And to see young women and to talk to young women. And I had a son, I was carrying a sign <laughs> that said, I am the woman who built Trump Tower. And people were coming up to me and saying, what, you know, did you really, did you work on it? And I said, no, I was in charge of it, you know? 
and and they were loving it. They were loving the fact that I was saying, you know, this is women can do this. This is what women can and should be doing, and mm -hmm. we need to promote women in construction. Yes, because construction is a damn lucrative field. Let it me really tell you, it really is. And I have some numbers here. Now you can you can um. It says surprisingly, the income gap between male and female workers is narrow narrower in construction than several other fields. Um, in fact, construction ranked first uh, last year among 20 industries for having the closest parity between male and female median incomes, and only behind community and social services and health care support among 22 occupations track. So right. is that true? So yeah, I think it probably is true, and uh, uh, reasons for that. There okay. are very, number one is the unions. When you're a member of a union, you all get the pay same, yes. the same pay rather, yes. and, and so that's... That's a big part of it. And then the other part of it is the, uh, these laws that have, um, where they allow non-union workers to work, but they pay them the same wage as union workers. So that, again, decrees that all the workers get the same amount is of Is that pay. like a local law? Or uh, it depends on yeah. the municipality you're okay, in, but there's yeah. a lot of, uh, um, I forget what they call it, um, it just ran out of my mind. An equal uh, equal pay law that says that you know whatever a union worker would get, mm -hmm. that your worker has to get. Uh, but non-union, um, that's a whole story for another time, but there's okay. a lot of non-union work going on in, yes. in the city right now. Yes. A tremendous amount of non-union work. So much so that I'm even a little worried about it. But um, definitely uh, in construction, if a woman is doing the same job, it just doesn't seem feasible that she won't get the same pay. Whereas when you have women doing some kinds of jobs compared to other kinds of jobs that are equal in value, mm -hmm. you will find a big pay disparity. Okay, so you just can't walk onto a, a construction site and say, I would like a job. How does one uh, sort of, if you're, okay, if you're not trying to be um, the project manager per se, if you just want to learn construction from the ground up, um, how does one, you know, find their way into the, the field? Well, that's a very difficult thing because how does anyone get a job in construction? I mean, lots of people want jobs in construction. Um, it used to be an old boys network where, you know, it would be, and again, my, my experience is mostly with union um, shops. The, uh, the fathers and sons and cousins and brother-in-laws, that would be the, uh, you know, how people would get into the unions. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the big things that challenged that was in the uh, 60s and 70s when minorities were not in the unions at all. Yes. And there was a big move on behalf of the unions, mm -hmm. and they made an outreach. Mm -hmm. And they outreached to the community, yes. and guess what? Mm -hmm. They got all the minority people they wanted because minority people can do the same work yes. that anyone else can do, yes. and they want it. What you don't find mm -hmm. is an outreach to women. There is no outreach to women on behalf of the unions. There are a couple of groups like uh, NEW, non-education, uh, uh, non-traditional uh, employment. Uh, employment, employment for women, for women. Uh -huh. uh, and they reach out to women and they have classes. Mm -hmm. And when they graduate their classes, mm -hmm. sometimes they're picked up. And I say sometimes because mm -hmm. they're not—they're qualified and they're not all always picked up. But that is a good training program. Mm -hmm. However, what I think the most important thing to do would be to start training young women when they're in their teens okay. in high school and junior college. Okay. Community college is the perfect place for this. Okay. Our president, past president, president Obama. Obama was very big on this, putting, sending people to college. Mm -hmm. But like Hillary Clinton said, not everyone wants to study English or history or math. Yes. So let's put people to work in the trades, which are noble professions. I agree with you. Noble professions and necessary because our infrastructure is crumbling around oh, us. Oh, God, yeah. So now we have President Donald Trump who, who proposes a $1 trillion infrastructure package. What does that look like, I mean, I mean, for the industry? Because the industry seems to be busy already. Is that feasible that we could have something like that? And if so, do you think we have the manpower and the woman power, most importantly the woman power, to, to, to address the need of our country as far as roads, bridges, tunnels, this and that? Well, I have to say that we do have, um, in, in some ways, a lack of some construction uh, uh, ability and, and people because you see a lot of people that are foreign-born, some people that are not even 
legal people mm -hmm. working in the trades. And, yes. and the reason for that is twofold. In some cases, mm -hmm. they work for less money, okay. which is something that should be abolished. We should not have anybody working for less money in this country for whatever reason. Yes. And then the other reason is there aren't, like you say, is, uh, uh, enough people. Yes. So if Trump is going to have a, bill, uh, a sure. trillion dollar uh, uh, budget. Because Republican friends let him do it. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, because even if it were a couple hundred billion, I yes. mean, it's a, I mean, it, it would be a lot of work. Yes. And what should be happening now is the outreach should be going on right now because yes. the work won't happen tomorrow. People should be training for this kind of work, and you do need training for it. Yes. That's why I am a proponent of the unions because they offer wonderful training programs. And again, like I said, if we could get that into our community colleges, it would be a tremendous boost for our industry. So that's really interesting because whereas um, the unions will, you know, uh, make sure that pay is equitable, they're not making sure that there's equitable gender, there's a gender parity with the job. So Why should they? No one's selling them to well, we're telling them to. We well, you them. and so I we're gonna are, have but... To have a, we're going to have to have a pink hat and march over there to the union headquarters. I think so, because, you know, in the federal uh, guidelines for work on federal jobs, there has to be uh, dis um, diversity, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's mandated, but it's not followed. And what happens when the government uh -huh. says to the unions, well, you don't have any women, the unions say women don't want the jobs, which is nonsense. No, they want the jobs. These are well-paying, exciting are jobs, jobs that, you know, that give you a sense of pride. Every time you walk by Trump Tower or any other building project you've been involved in, you... you, you I have my name on a building. Oh, really? On did you a sign a beam or just your no, name no, is on no, the building? No, 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 no. On the cornerstone. Uh, I oh, did a so building so for uh, Leonard Stone of Hearts Mountain, uh, Hearts mm -hmm. Industries, and on the cornerstone is his name and my name and the architect's name. That's really exciting. 61st Street. Madison Avenue. You, you have, you know, I mean, I think that it's just exciting to just to be at that level of creation. When I I write on in my free time, and in fact, I have a, just earned the master's in creative writing. So when I construct a good story or even a good paragraph, I take a great sense of pride in my work. So I can just imagine how you feel knowing that you've created this edifice that's going to stand hopefully for a hundred more years, and you know, will be there for you know people to enjoy. You know even when you're not here, which is when I rush in your Yes, I, I mean, I think that's definitely true, and it's true of every bricklayer that laid a brick and every electrician that wired it and every painter that painted it. You know, it's a tremendous sense of pride. It's, you can do something and look at it and say, this is what you did. Yes. So, um, okay, so from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing these, these massive construction firms, the same, it's almost like it's like a, the usual suspects, we won't mention their names, but there are these really big construction firms that are actually building everything, it seems. So within those, those companies, aren't they doing outreach to sort of, you know, bring in that's the, uh, the next generation of women, would you say, or there's not that happening? And you know who I'm talking about, the yeah. Turners, the Scans, yeah. the Scans, yeah, yeah, sure those people. You see the, the signs up in front of all of these, and it's right. the same names. So, and I think it's not, it's not because it's just a monopoly. It's just because they bring expertise mm -hmm. because they have sure, that, absolutely. You know the resources. So uh, you know none of the, you know. Would you say if you're interested in becoming um, a project manager that someone should go to one of these firms or should they just go to one of the colleges? How does one you know? I mean to to work in construction. I I think studying construction management, engineering, or uh, architecture is is the way to start if mm -hmm. you want to be a construction. Uh, project manager, that kind of thing. Uh, these companies do say mm -hmm. that they're looking for women, and they say a lot of things, but I don't see the outreach necessarily there. But you're saying the numbers are still the same? It's been The 3%. numbers are still, well, I told you, 6% of 6%. women in project management and 10% in, in engineering and construction engineering. So um, I will say that, you know, there aren't a tremendous amount of women in the field, but you know, it's sort of like you start the ball rolling and, it, and it'll catch up with itself and become a snowball. Um, I did see an ad though once, and I won't say what company, for something called a mechanical superintendent, which is a job I held on the Hyatt Hotel. 
And it basically what you do is you run the mechanical work. You make sure that it's coordinated so everything fits in the ceiling and everything fits in the wall and everything fits in the floor. Mm -hmm. And it means running a series of meetings and having draftsmen and big burly tin knockers yeah, and stuff like that imagine. work together and get it done. And I did that job and it was great and I was good at it. In the advertisement, it says, must be able to lift or move 75 pounds. Hmm. I said, what the hell is that? <laughs> it's a pretext. You don't have to be able to move. I couldn't move 30 pounds, to be honest with you. For years, it was that, that was the impediment for fire women, for, for, you know, firefighters yes. for women. They had to be able to hold the hose or something that was 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. So they said, women can't do this. Right. We see that women can. You know? Yes. Well, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that 50% of every occupation is going to be women, and I'm not saying that 50% of every occupation is going to be men. Yes. There are differing, you know, strengths and skills and abilities. Yes. But in, in construction, there are so many jobs that women can do, and there's just no excuse for it. Yes, I agree with you. Um, one last question. Um, what are some... What would you say to um, women who are right now being, because we're going to show this during Women's History Month, and I think that you deserve your kudos as a pioneer because yeah. I could just imagine what it was like in the 70s when like women were supposed to all want to look like Farrah Fawcett or something or somebody from Charlie's Angels. And um, so how hard it was for you on, on, on a site to, you know, to excel. Um, so... What would you say to um, women who are pioneering, whatever field they're in? Um, what would you say? A couple of things. Uh, that's very important. It was, it was horrific for me, and I'm not going to deny it. I mean, there were no laws like uh, sexual harassment laws or anything like that. I mean, it was way before any of that, and it was, it was awful. And I internalized it, and I talk about this in my book. It changed me, mm -hmm. and that shouldn't be, and I'm sad about that. And it should never happen to a woman. A woman should never be changed by her environment. Um, one thing to do is to seek out other women mm -hmm. and to talk about the things that are bothering you for sure. Uh, another thing is if something happens, report it. Yes. And don't be afraid to report it. It's essential that you do that. Yes. But I think the most important thing is to not let yourself be defined by what you do. Yes. You can be a mechanic in the daytime. You can be an electrician or, or a steam fitter. And that doesn't mean that that's what you are, a steam fitter, some hard hat hanging out by a column. Mm -hmm. to, to be honest with you, having women in the industry brings the whole industry up because it, it makes us look more human mm -hmm. and less like a bunch of, you know, uh, low-class guys hanging out <laughs> and uh, wolf whistling. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. But definitely, I am not defined by what I do. Yes. I define my work. My work does not define me. That's a very important concept for women. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I was moved by, uh, oh, you know what? One last, uh, two things. Uh, this, uh, Barbara Ress is one of the most interesting people, and you must read her book, um, Alone on the, all on the, all alone on the 68th floor. Did you know that she was on To Tell the Truth? <laughs> yeah, I that read that fun. in here, and I thought that was the most exciting. You were like Nipsey Russell. Who else was on? Yeah, the Nipsey show? Russell got me because he asked about City College, and I, I had to tell the truth. Oh, okay. City College is a great school. Okay, so I was reading. Okay. And also, you name drop a lot in here too. I do, I do. I'm Spielberg actually revising and, that uh, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, I mean, not to say that you're name dropping it for negative purposes. No, no, no. But it's just interesting the people who the sure. lives, of, the interesting people who have crossed your path because you chose you chose this. Field. Absolutely, and you know, by virtue of the fact that I work for Donald Trump and he built such a fantastic building. I mean, Trump Tower is an icon, and even though it's very different now than it was when it opened, they don't have the retail stores and stuff, it's still one of the buildings in New York. We had millionaires, celebrities, famous people all coming in. I walked around with President Nixon. I oh walked around goodness. with President Carter. I wow. met Spielberg, and every time he showed up, he had somebody with him, like Amy Irving or... Um, uh, the other director, his name escapes me, the one that did... Um, um, Lucas? 
Yes, George Lucas, yeah. Um, you know, and I met all these great people, and it was fun. And the thing, George Lucas, the funniest thing about him was that he was more interested in what I do and me doing a, a non-traditional thing than he was in, you know, me talking about him and his, uh, his uh, directing and everything, Star Wars. But it, it, it was great. It was absolutely great, and it was a blast for me. And I wouldn't change a single thing about any of it. Wow, that's great. You know, George Lucas was probably talking to you and trying to you know, um, learn more about you because he was probably looking at you as a role model for, for the women in his stories because, you know, they're very, um, what is it called, um, um, heroic women, but they're arch archetypes, archetypes. Archetypes, yeah. And so, you know, I'm sure he was looking at you to say, wow, this is really someone who um, I could, uh, you know, I'm looking for the, the one where you talk about being alone and not being afraid of being alone. And I thought that was on page... Oh, it's, okay, I got it, page 183, okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna edit, so. Okay, so what happens, happened was, um, when you say, during the process of finishing and opening the apartment building, we had a few small fires and a lot of false alarms in the building. And um, I'll start here. Um, I was, another time, I was up in Donald's apartment checking on something when I got a call on my walkie-talkie that there was a fire alarm in the building and the fire department had shut the elevators down. There I was, all alone on the 68th floor, and I had to fend for myself. The emergency generator was working and there was light in the stairwells. I walked, ran down the stairs in my bare feet because by then I was dressing like an executive and had, high, had on high heels. I was not comfortable being stranded up there Okay, I was not uncomfortable being stranded up there, forced to figure out things for myself. I often went up to the top after everyone was gone and just looked down at the city. Even when it was bare concrete and the only barrier was a steel wire, I liked the feeling of being on top of the world. And to my mind, I was on top of the construction world. I made that climb alone. And in those moments, I reveled in what I had accomplished. I always managed to find my way back, and the day of the fire alarm, somehow I got to the lobby soon enough to deal with the fire department. I dealt with my feet for several days after that. <laughs> so my, I, I was very moved by that because obviously that's where you, you know, you studied, yes. made the title of the, the book, which is a really fascinating read about a very um, archetypal type of woman, and um, I just really enjoyed um, meeting you and, and reading your book, and I hope to keep in touch with you because I would like to do something to help women um, come into the industry, um, whether it be as an engineer, um, an architect, a, or a construction uh, worker. I have experience uh, having worked in the field of uh, architecture and engineering as a marketer. So I know how important it is to have women sitting around the table when decisions are being made, when projects are being um, designed and built. So thank you so much for thank joining you. us today on Culture Matters. It's TV. been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.